Hey, Mr. P here. Hey, it's Mr. Schmitz. And in this video, we're talking ecological succession. So it's all about what happens to a particular area after a disturbance. Let's get into it. We've got two types of succession. The first is called primary succession. And primary succession occurs in an area where there is bare rock left over. So we've got n absolutely nothing left from whatever that previous community would have been. And it's a series of stages and both types of succession follow a very similar path. They just have a different starting point. So with primary succession, again, you've got that bare rock, absolutely nothing left behind. So what's a situation where we might have this occur in nature? Several examples could be like glacial retreat where a glacier once stood, obviously melts and then retreats or becomes smaller. And so it leaves the bare rock underneath. It could be a volcanic eruption, which is when a volcano spews magma or lava and covers the area with molten lava, which eventually hardens or solidifies into rock. So to run through the stages real quick, as we start with bare rock, the biggest indicator that we are working with primary succession is that soil formation has to occur first. And so if you look in this diagram, you can see on the far left side, there is no soil. It is just piles of rocks. Again, this might be because the glacier melted and left behind the rock underneath or a volcanic eruption, maybe a meteor, things like that. Obviously, we haven't seen that type of activity in a while, but back when our solar system was more active, that was definitely a possibility. With this bare rock, though, it involves the weathering of that rock. So if you don't know this, soil is actually just broken down rocks mixed with some dead stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So as time goes on, we get ice and rain and wind and all of those things breaking down the rock into smaller bits. We get what we would call pioneer species and those species would be your little moss and lichens that are going to begin to accumulate on the rocks and grow. They will actually help with what we call chemical weathering. They release enzymes and things that will break down the rock over time as well. They will also live and die as a part of their life cycle. So we start to accumulate some organic material. Eventually we get some soil. And as time progresses, and it's important, this is basically a graph, so to speak. And so you can see down here on what would be the x-axis that we have time. And this is in typically hundreds of years. So this takes a really, really long time to occur. It takes a while for all of that chemical weathering and the erosion that has to happen in order for the soil to become deposited. We also have wind, like you said, which will bring in foreign material that will fall to the ground or deposit and will help to build up this biomass, which will eventually become soil. And as the time progresses, we progress through these stages, pioneer stages, intermediate stages and climax community, you will see that when we look at the soil deposition, the soil gets deeper and deeper and deeper as we progress through the years. Right, and as that soil is getting deeper, kind of to wrap this process up, you see that deeper soil allows for larger plants to grow. Larger plants allow for more animals because your bigger plants are going to be habitats for those animals. So you start with some grasses and some small bushes. You then progress into some smaller trees, maybe pine trees, things like that, some berry bushes, shrubs, and then that gives way to what we call our climax community, which is gonna be those big shade tolerant trees that provide a big habitat like oak trees or hickory trees, things like that. And that's where we get to that would be what we call the climax community or your final community where it was before that disturbance occurred. And when we kind of talk about the time factor and the time it takes, these trees take hundreds of years by themselves to grow, let alone the hundreds of years it takes for the soil to get to a depth that is conducive to growing trees in the first place. So we are talking hundreds of years, long periods of time. Right. So that is primary succession. The second type is secondary succession. We've identified a small typo here. Yeah. This is secondary succession. Secondary succession is succession that occurs with a smaller scale disturbance. And so the big difference is that your starting point begins with some form of soil left behind and probably some life left in that soil. And so with secondary succession, some examples could be like in the picture, a fire. It could be clear cutting the land for farming, tornadic activity, or a hurricane, things like that. All of these would be examples of disturbances that could cause land to change, but not so disturbing that there would be nothing left behind. And it is important to note that these stages are the same. We still have a pioneer species, intermediate species, and climax community, or a pioneer stage, intermediate stage, and climax stage. This does take up to 150, in some cases, years in order to happen, but this is not hundreds of years uh, because the soil is already there. Right. And it's important to note that you have the same types of organisms occurring in the same stages in the same order. Right. 
So you're still going to have grasses to start with, and you're still going to shift into those smaller trees and shrubs, which will give way to those larger trees. And the time commitment here, like Mr. Piper said, is much shorter, and that's because really you're looking at the time commitment for large trees to grow and establish. And so that's why the time is much shorter. Right. You don't need the soil deposition in this case because it's already there. That is everything we've got for you for this lecture. Have a great day. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.